And welcome to the Liverpool versus Napoli preview. I am joined by the one, the only, it's that man, Dave, um, to preview Napoli. You've watched them in depth mm. and detail. And what have you learned about them? First of all, what formation are they going to play against us? I think it's interesting, of course, Sarri was manager last season. They're very much a 4-3-3 side. Carl Ancelotti's always come in and he loves a 4-4-2. That's his sort of style off the ball. They do transition to an interesting shape, maybe the Christmas tree when they've got it, but it's very much a 4-4-2. Who's in at right back? You know, a player that's more of a holding player under Sarri last season, likes to attack a little bit more now. Koulibaly, Real Abio, um, Mario Rui, of course, Ospina, ex-Arsenal goalkeeper in goal. Into their midfield, Callion, who used to play right wing, has now dropped back into more of a right midfield position. Uh, Alan partners Hamzik in central midfield. Zielinski on the left and, of course, Dries Mertens in Insignia up front. The slight changes from last season, of course, uh, Callion first up played a lot higher up the pitch last season. Mm -hmm. Insignium was more of a left winger than a forward. And I think the midfield shape is interesting as well, because these two sat ahead of Jorginho. And again, that's probably an area we'll talk about later on that Liverpool could exploit. So let's talk about uh, Carlo Ancelotti first and foremost. He's one of those managers who I, I massively respect. And one of the reasons that I respect him is he doesn't have a set formation mm. that he wants to work towards. He will use what the previous manager has done and shape and mould that into this system. So let's talk about the midfield a little bit now with Hamsik and Allen. Obviously, they were playing as, as two of three last yep. time out. How have they fared moving into a two-man midfield from a three-man midfield? I think it's interesting between the two players. Mario Hamsik was more of a creative attacking midfielder with Jorginho playing balls to him in between the lines. Now he's the playmaker. He's the guy that's getting deep on the ball. I'd say his form hasn't been as good as last season, but Allen. Really, really on form this season. Very abrasive, almost coming complete. Under Sarri was more of a ball winner. Now he's doing everything. Ball winning, you know, dropping on again in the ball, scoring goals. You know, you take you get the game against Juve. It was his interception that led to the Napoli uh, quick transition and the goal that they scored. So I think it's a different pairing. And again, the issue is who holds and who goes. At the moment, it's Hamzik. But Hamzik is more of a naturally attacking mm -hmm. uh, player. So it will be interesting to see their balance at the end of the season versus now. Because at the moment, for me, it's not quite right. So the last game they played was against Juventus. Mm. And for, for, for our fans, we've put Liverpool in a 4-3-3. In, in, a, in a team that wouldn't surprise us if we were to yeah. see this midfield with Milner, Henderson and Wijnaldum, Salah, Firmino and Mane up top. Now, Juventus are playing a 4-3-3 as well, which obviously helps us mm -hmm. when we're going to take it to the board yeah. and look about, look about it. Just looking at it though, where are the areas of the pitch right now that you think could be a danger to Liverpool and a danger to Napoli? I think first up, the dangers for Liverpool, maybe Callion's movement. We all know how Robertson does attack, uh, and that's an area where Callion has made his career out of running in behind from that right-hand side. Did it re really well under Sarri, wouldn't get involved in possession, would stay high and run in, so that's one area. I think Zielinski's ability to carry on the counter as well was kind of good against Juve inside five minutes. He, he drove from the left wing, cut and hit the post. And I think that interchange of when they get the ball in transition, they're very, very quick. Last season, they were more get the ball, hold it like a Guardiola team, mm -hmm. like Sarri's Chelsea in the Premier League. This is more our Ancelotti counter-attacking to expect Insignia to drop off, Zielinski to come in and arguably see a Christmas tree formation we'll show later on. In terms of Liverpool, where you're looking at, Juve played a 4-3-3, but it looked also like a 4-4-2 diamond. Dybala coming into 10, Mandzukic and Ronaldo playing up top. Similar to how Liverpool react with Firmino dropping in and then Salah and Mane pushing on. So again, that's an issue, especially on that left wing. Ronaldo basically created all three goals. One was a cross, one was a shot, one was a, a, header, flip, from a, a header from a corner. But the resultant attack, the reason why that corner was there, again, it was a counter down that left-hand side. So basically, you're, you're attacking the space behind Hussein and you expect someone like Sadio Mane or if Salah plays out there or Firmino, will, that'll be the area there. So pretty much, I think it's down the right-hand side for both, uh, for Napoli and the left-hand side for Liverpool, where this game will be won and lost. I was looking at um, Napoli and, and some stats from it to, to show how they've mm. progressed throughout the season. 40% of their attacks are actually coming down the left-hand side, which is quite interesting, isn't it? I think Liverpool probably about even between yeah. the right and the left, very much not coming down the right-hand side. Is this so that Callaghan can get space. Is that why they're playing it down the left-hand side? Kind of, that's kind of the thing. You think that uh, Allen is, is more of the ball winner out of the pairing in the midfielder, so that the play comes down this through Hamzik, basically. So Hamzik will drop, he'll get on the ball from Koulibaly uh, or Ray Albiol, and then they'll play through Zielinski. Zielinski last season played in central midfield. Mm -hmm. You know That's where he was suited in a 4-3-3. And the shape kind of reacts to that sometimes, depending on whether Mertens has pulled left. It's a very fluid system, I think. It's a little bit more fluid under Sarri, where it's a little bit more rigid in terms of where everyone should have been 
been at the right time, but they still changed positions. This is more about a formation that's a bit more fluid where it's a 4-4-2 in defence, but you could see it being a 4-3-3, 4-2-3-1. Very, very fluid on the counter-attack. And I think that is an interesting area here where they'll build up down the left and then bang, they'll try and hit you on the right-hand side. That was the classic move last season for Sarri's Napoli. And as you mentioned, Ancelotti's a manager that doesn't go in and change things massively, kind of goes with what he's got and then make something happen. You think the Real Madrid team he took over from Mourinho yeah. didn't change a lot, but made them more possession-based. They won the Champions League. You know, one of only three managers to do it three times, the European Cup. OK, Dave, we're at the board now. We've got the Napoli uh, team set up in that 4-4-2 formation. You mentioned a couple of times there the Christmas tree. I think, you know, two slightly different Christmas trees I remember from Ancelotti, the 2003-2007 to Christmas tree, and then probably the 2007 one yep. changed slightly. Probably 4-3-1-2 to 4-2-3-1, something yep. like that. How in possession of the football and Napoli shifting into that Christmas tree formation? So I think this is more 2007 with mm -hmm. Kaká with Seydorf, where Seydorf took a false position out wide, as Ancelotti calls it, and Kaká would play as almost a striker. So similar when they react, it's more of Zielinski moves in, and that creates the sort of Christmas tree, mm -hmm. where you potentially will see Hamzik maybe operate a little bit wider, Kalion's, you know, very, very aggressive. Obviously, your fullbacks are going are gonna to push and join into the attacks as well. And this is pretty much Napoli's shape, where they're building with two, two defensive midfielders, two fullbacks, and then this front four that's a little bit right-sided, where they're... Everyone's on the left. had a Christmas tree with one branch. Yeah, that's and the that's thing. Callahan, isn't that, it? That's the branch, and I think that's the kind of interesting side that that was a workman like Catuso for Ancelotti at AC. Now it's actually a winger. So potentially a little bit more attacking. But what the interesting side as well, Napoli still press very high. Mm -hmm. The big thing that Napoli will do against Liverpool is press them high out, out, out of the back. But the issues that I saw against Juve was this space in between these two lines was absolutely massive. And that's something that, that before you had a defensive midfielder here. Yeah. So you had Jorginho pressing. So let's just say Insignia's Jorginho. He'd hold and then it'd be a bit easier to maintain that balance in midfield. Now that press is very much 4-4-2. We're seeing a big gap in midfield that you've exploited with their diamond with playing it fast to someone like Amari Mandzukic. He'd lay off to Dybala. Dybala would have two players ahead of him and he'd be an attacker midfield. Okay, a couple of things there to, to note. I, I'm already thinking about what Liverpool players could mm. end up in that space first and foremost. And I think they're probably quite obvious what you'd expect. But one of the interesting things is Ancelotti is obviously a student of the Arrigo Saki type of football. This isn't Arrigo Saki. No. Arrigo Saki is very much maybe here. Yeah. 25 metres, defence to attack, crunch the space, always an option to go over the top if this line does come up. But... Arrigo Sacchi and Carlo Ancelotti in the past would always say, you have got to play exceptional football to play through us. That's not what you're seeing against Juventus. No, and I think that's the change that they need to make, is that that, that space needs to be closed down and they need to be sitting on halfway and closing it down in between the lines. And that's something that I think will come with Ancelotti. I think changing from one style to another style takes a bit of time. And this is more counter-attacking, more Carlo Ancelotti Champions League football where that slight mistake, we, we'll see it now mm -hmm. at the start of the season, end of the season, and that'll close down. They'll understand the role between Hamzik and Allen. Again, we mentioned they, those two played um, as advanced uh, players in the 4-3-3, where they'll know that maybe they need to drop a little bit or they need to be pulling the centre-halves over. Again, Koulibaly, very, very quick. Um, and Real Abiol, a little bit old. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see whether Abiol will be there come two years' time under Ancelotti or a year under Ancelotti. If they want to play so high, he'll be someone that I think, look, you've got to replace him again. Liverpool could target him. Yeah, OK. Um, I'll tell you what, let's drop, them, let's drop them back then. You mentioned before about the, the full-backs and the fact that they both like to, to push up. One interesting thing, you know, I, th I think whenever a team comes and plays against Liverpool where both full-backs com come against us, I always find that we do very, very well in those situations. Mm. Is this an area that we'll be looking to exploit and this as well? Definitely. I think in terms of... Hussein last season, we mentioned before, would be more of a you know a holding fullback, more of a Cesar Aspilicueta. Now he's playing a lot higher uh, with Hamzik dropping, Cali on out, out nice and wide and then sort of tucking in. So that's definitely one area where Liverpool could exploit that. So should we put a couple of our yeah. players in? So we'll maybe go with the, the front three first and foremost. Let's go Wijnaldum, uh, let's go Henderson, let's go James Milner there. And then for the sake of arguments, we'll just throw the back four in as well. Um, this midfield... Three, almost, yep. as it were. I suppose, really, Zielinski's playing there. I was wondering how, against Juventus, they got overloaded in the midfield. You play Emery Chan, was it? Yeah, um, Emery Chan was in there, yeah. Yep. And um, Pjanic. Pjanic is the Henderson role. Yeah. 
how did they deal with going a two against a three in midfield? And did Zielinski have to come in a lot and help out? So the interesting side of the Juve shape is it was it was a little bit wider. So you saw that their, their outside centre it would play a little bit wider. So you had the likes of uh, Kalion and Zielinski trying to get involved in that battle. But obviously that causes other problems. If you you know like Juve do, they attack with their fullbacks. Cancelo and Alexandro get really high. So that's kind of the same issue that. The only way to really deal with it is by going narrow four, mm -hmm. um, and that's a problem with the, the fullbacks pushing on. So again, it's a battle that's going to have to be, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see. The interesting side with Alan hit that he wasn't afraid of pressing, he wasn't afraid of being really aggressive in the final third. And when you know Dybala did drop to a, you know, a, a sort of diamond shaped position, Alan nicked the ball off him, and uh, Napoli scored a goal. So that's something that Liverpool need to be a little bit wary of. That if you give Alan a chance to win it. He'll go and win it off you. So that's one of those tactical things that you'll be interested in. But with the the sort of channels that you you want to play through that were played through by uh, Juve was almost operating through this line and hitting uh, Mario Mandzukic to his feet. The wrong way around. So they'd play from centre half, they win it back, quick transition through feet, they drop it off into the hole. Then they're in this situation where they've got a three v two in a way. You know, Hamzik will be making a you know making a, a move to move back. The fullbacks are going, but the the position again that. Juve really caused the problems was in this position. So this situation was created. Two of the goals came from open play where they were quick transitions. Dybala would beat either Allen, beat Allen in the dribble once and beat Hamzik in the dribble. So something that Firmino is very capable of doing. We saw what he did against Roma last season. And then it was just playing direct to the feet of Ronaldo, allowing Ronaldo either to pull wide. So the first goal he pulled wide and crossed for Mario Mandzukic making the run inside. The Mad that both defenders got drawn to the guy who's not really... Uh, the header of the ball. Yeah, I think that's the interesting side that Mario Mandzukic almost was like the weakness of these two guys. He's very powerful in the air. With Firmino getting a bit of uh, you know a bit of pace on the on the run, or maybe Salah moving and operating, getting in behind that area, that could be an option. Uh, alternatively, the, the second one was Ronaldo actually cut in and shot, and it went in. So this is the interesting side about this Liverpool attack. It's pretty much the same. You know, you think Firmino's the baller, uh, Mario Mandzukic, the goal scorer, let's say Mo Salah, and this is Cristiano Ronaldo and Sadio Mane, Sadio. Mane, keep getting hammered for that on my channel. I apologise, guys, if I said that wrong. Uh, but again, we all just the... say Sadio. Sadio. We say Sadio. Sadio, right, right Sadio. Uh, yeah, he's boss. Could be the key guy. And again, we've seen how good he is sometimes on the dribble, taking people on, making the right decisions. That's the only question mark I've got on Mane. Sometimes it's not quite the right option. And this game may be a big one to see. Okay, he's going to start to kick on with his decision making when the ball at his feet. Because sometimes I think it goes for goal a bit too much when the cross or the pass could be on when you've created this sort of three v two situation on the counter-attack for Liverpool. OK, one area of the pitch that I, I think is massively crucial to us, especially with you saying that the Ronaldo in the Juventus game was where the space was coming, it's how these two link up with Sadio Mane. Now, I know that Callahan's going to be very high and wide. Yep. Um, James Milner will normally drop into that space and Andy Robertson will be the guy that feeds Sadio Mane. So not quite working in the mm. same way as Juventus. Milner to Robertson. Robertson is the guy yep. who always passes most to Sadio Mane mm. of every player. How do you think they're going to be able to do this? Is it a case of, listen, these two guys are going to be up against our centre-back. Alan's probably going to be looking in uh, Hamsik maybe. Is he going to be a spare man or are they going to be I think that, that's the really interesting side is that how do they deal with Liverpool's left-hand side because they didn't really do well against Juve and the reactions weren't very good. Mario um, Rui was, was awful and the game got sent off, but positionally was very, very poor. So you're going to have to see him drop, which consequently will allow Liver uh, Napoli to push over a little bit. I imagine Houston will press Robertson. I imagine Callion will press James Milner. I imagine Alan will come over and they'll shuffle. Like any side, like Liverpool, that play pressing, compact football, the big thing is the switch. And if they yeah. can work a switch out... Uh, either by you know pulling the the back four that way, then working out that way through Firmino or through uh, Henderson, those balls over the top. Again, that could be a situation of pulling Napoli one way with with Liverpool using Milner as this in this Tony Cruz position. That's kind of the really interesting side. Cruz started to pick up a few seasons ago where he'd almost play at left back. Marcelo would be high, and he'd drop in and he and he'd have that free sort of space. It kind of negates the press, and it means a situation that you know really you want you want that, don't you? You want that situation where your wingers dealing with their fullback. But, but then, it's, not, it's not likely then, that that's yeah, going to Then happen. you've got a bit of an issue where Insignia is then going to have to go over and I, I expect it more to be Callahan. Will Callahan track Robertson? Or it, see, this is the, this is the issue that, yeah. the, that the teams always have with Andy Robertson. He's not thought of as an attacking threat mm. and yet he is consistently found in those areas of the pitch 
drilling the ball across. I mean, you think about the ball that he played in at the weekend, just to Shaqiri. Yeah, you know, fantastic. His, you know, his deliveries second to none on that left-hand side, and he's always the fellow that drives furthest forward. Yeah, I think Hussein's the guy that's going to be trying to pick him up. I think that's going to be the one of the, the key, key battles on that side. And it's whether Hussein, who didn't have a great game, like he kept on getting positionally caught out where uh, Abiol would be dealing with Cristiano Ronaldo on his own. Mm-hmm. He's like 33 years old. Yeah, Ronaldo's 33, but Ronaldo is one of the well, he's probably he's got, the best got, football in the world right now. The other 22-year-old. Yeah, 100%. Well. And that, that was a situation. If Robertson can get into that wide area, Robertson's going to deliver. Then you've got this issue where you're shifting and where's Mo Salah, where's Firmino? Then say Mane, who's in this free space. Again, you've created this situation where you're going to have to have a Zielinski dropping back on Mo Salah. You know, you're basically creating massive imbalance in this Napoli defence. And I think that's the current issue that Ancelotti's got at the moment, that they're not quite right. It's the perfect time to play them. I think they're a bit broken in midfield. I think there's issues out wide. I think Robertson, who's naturally attacking for you guys, is going to be a guy that's going to get a lot of the ball in that position. How do Napoli react? Do one thing that Ancelotti could do, you know, if he's thinking about how this wants to move, you know, go to more of a 4-5-1. Maybe throw Allen into defensive midfield, Insignia out wide, and just play Dries Mertens up front. Because mm-hmm. then you've got a little bit more solution where... Allen could be going over to help them. You know, you've got Hamzik in that sort of area where you're creating more bodies in that zone. And, and, you know, then, you're, and then you're right, though, the switch is still the play, isn't switch, it? Yeah. The tw- again, against, you look at any team in European football that's good, the switch is still something that kills them. That's why teams you know, work on it so much in your training because it is attacking your weak side and then going on, sorry, attacking your strong side and hitting the weak side. That's what Napoli do with Callion. That's what Liverpool have got to be a little bit reactive to if Robertson's caught up the pitch. Very, very good at moving that, him behind. That's why James Milner is such an important yeah. piece in this puzzle, I suppose. Okay, one one final thing before we call it quits on this one. Uh, I wanted to take a look at that midfield, uh, almost the midfield four. Now, if they're in sort of the this position, the midfield three here, you got Insignia and Mertens. Which one of them's dropping in first and foremost? Uh, I'd say it would be Insignia would probably be the one to go. Uh, it was a little bit more on Pjanic, but it was more that they both go in a way. But mm-hmm. they both try and, you know, you're trying to block it, trying to get in there. Hamzik's the guy who, obviously, he's not a natural number six. You think of him more as a creator, mm. a little bit further up the pitch. We played against them in pre-season. We beat them 5-0. He was playing in a 6 and a 4-3-3. Yep. Three, three. It's something they've they've utilised a couple of times at the start of the season. He's moved away from it. He's got played last f- mm. three out of the last four games in the 4-4-2 that we've talked about. Whose responsibility is it to get him? Because I saw against Chelsea at the weekend that Henderson was coming because of the threat of uh, Kovacic and Kante, that these two were held in position and Henderson was moving forwards. And that caught us out a couple of times. Is there something else that we can do? Do you think maybe Bobby Firmino could be a player that has to drop in? Yeah, I think that's definitely... That was the really interesting side of, you know, when I was looking at that Chelsea game, who picks up uh, Jorginho? And I, I think that it fa- either you you block the passes off with Firmino, so say the ball's at Koulibaly's feet, you, you know, you're covering that passing lane. Either you're doing that or he's being aggressive and he's still covering that passing lane, he's forcing them to go that way. But then that's the problem that you're getting that hit and that's probably why Henderson was coming out of the position. You see, I would have probably flipped it and left Milner sitting and I would have thrown Wijnaldum on him. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because I think you don't want Henderson to go because you get that instability at number 10, at number 10 for the opponents. I think Milner's really good at covering. So if it was going to be anyone that would go, would be a Wijnaldum. But you could throw someone like a Keita in there mm-hmm. and then he could be that pressure on Hamzik. The interesting side with uh, Juve is that they they were really good defensively where you know as soon as they lost the ball, it go to a 4-5-1, then it react to a diamond and it was really, really quick. But the guy that caused Hamzik the most problem was Mario Mandzukic dropping off, which is Roberto Firmino, right? The interesting side is when he was receiving around the left side of the pitch, when he was receiving balls to feet, his touch wasn't great. There was times where I think when Mandzukic was actually defending on the, the left midfield, notices the touch is bad, you know, steps in okay, and they so nip. we could use that as a pressing trigger. 100%. Hamzik is the guy that, you know, when he's receiving back to goal, you want to you wanna come on, on him hard. You know, and that's where you can see why Wyn- <laughs> That's where you can see Wijnaldum going as well and potentially throwing Hendo up and then you've got the, you know, you've got that man orientated. So just press. repeat that one if Hamzik uh, he received the ball to feet. With the back, with his back to goal, you've got to press him aggressively. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then the big thing there is that is if you can nick it in that area, there's no defensive midfielder. Cool. Okay. That's the um, all right. Thanks you very much for your insight. Um, let's have a score prediction from you. <sighs> I can't see. I think it's going to be a high-scoring game. So Napoli have scored 14 goals in Syria and conceded 10. They've been in. They've been in a number of 3-2. So I'm going to go 3-2 Liverpool. I think. Okay. 
Brilliant. Okay, well, thanks very much. Don't forget to check out Dave's channel. It is literally just Statman Dave on YouTube. Uh, you've done loads of videos on Liverpool this season as well. Done a few, yeah. Top, Ta top drawer. Tactically very interesting, I think, Liverpool. Uh, the role of Naby Keita is not in the side yet, but I went and did an in-depth video on that that was really interesting to make. Uh, let alone, you know, everything else. So, you know, check that one out. Or check out the Firmino one. What is a false nine? Obviously, everyone knows what a false nine is, but I go back in time. Look at Johan Cruyff. Excellent. Okay, well, uh, don't, do check that out. Link is in the description. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, Dave. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, fingers crossed Liverpool get a big victory against Napoli in a, in a crucial game in the Champions League. Uh, we'll see you next time. ta -da.